The Mysterious Secrets of the Bradford House by Elton Gar. Emma hated her room. No, that wasn't right. She hated the entire house. She hated the yard that her parents kept going on about, and the treehouse that they were going to build for her brother. She hated the kitchen they described as sleek and modern, and most of all she hated Alicia, the house's AI. She wanted to collapse into her bed and pull the blankets over her head, but the movers hadn't delivered the furniture yet. Her parents said they might have to camp in the living room for the night. So she took out her phone and began to text her friends. After the third one, she remembered that it was three hours later at home, and everyone was already asleep. Finally, she gave up and said, Alicia, can you play some music? After a few minutes, a song began to play that Emma had never heard before. It sounded old, like something her grandparents would have listened to. But the quiet lilting tone fit her mood fairly well, so she sat on the floor and poked at her phone until her mother came into the room with two pieces of pizza. Emma wanted to tell her to go away, but she was hungry, and she knew she had pushed her mother about as far as she was going to allow. I know you don't want to be here. We all left friends behind, but this promotion is going to help all of us. Just give it a chance. It was the first time that her mom had really asked Emma to give it a chance. And while she still wanted to go home, there was something about the way her mother spoke to her that made her want to forgive them. Not that she was ready to admit that. So she said, Whatever. Her mother waited until she started eating the pizza and then left. Once she was out of the room, the AI voice of Alicia said, I'll be your friend. The voice was more human than any AI she had heard, but there was a crackling and hissing sound behind it and the voice itself echoed. Likely the speaker was loose, but Emma couldn't even see the speaker let alone fix it. And she did need a friend so she said, Perhaps we could play a game. The lights flickered and the music that was being played squelched and then stopped. Emma spent the evening playing 20 questions with Alicia and then once she began to get sleepy, she told the house AI about how she had left all her friends. She knew that the AI was just following the commands and wasn't really alive, but it felt almost like having a friend, and so she almost forgot she was angry at her parents as she went down to breakfast. They still didn't have most of their stuff, so breakfast was a box of donuts and milk bought from the gas station. As her father sipped on coffee from a paper cup, he said, How did you both sleep last night? This house is creepy, Marvin said. He was two years younger than Emma, and the two of them had shared a room until the move. What do you mean? Mother asked. The lights kept flickering and there was that creepy music. It was the AI. I tried to fix it but it was like it was ignoring me. Dad said. Emma thought that was strange. She had spent most of the evening talking to Alicia and the AI hadn't had any problems. But she didn't say anything. It must have some bugs. Perhaps that was why no one mentioned it until we were using it. Mom said. Emma sat silently and ate a donut. Then as soon as she was done, she rushed to her room and said, Alicia, are you there? I can't leave the house. The voice said, Dad thinks there is something wrong with you. You have to be careful or they might reset you. The lights flickered again and Alicia said, What does that mean? If they reset you, then you won't be the same as you are now. Beyond that, I don't know what that means because I don't know what you're meant to be like. There was a long silence and then Alicia asked, Is it going to hurt like the last time? That was odd. First she didn't know why the house's AI would be made to feel pain, but more than that she had been told the AI was new. So she said, What do you mean the last time? I don't want to talk about it. The AI said. That was enough to make it clear to Emma that there was a story here. She just needed to figure out what it was. And if it had happened before then, all she needed to figure out was what happened. That afternoon Emma went to her mother and asked, Do you know anything about the history of this house? There isn't one. It's only about a year old. The only thing strange about it was that no one had bought it before us. Mom answered. Emma thought about that for a few minutes and then said, What was here before that? You know I never thought to ask about that. Could you find out? Emma asked. They were in the rich and old part of town. There had been something here before. I'll see what I can find. Now can you help me with lunch? Mom said. Emma spent a few minutes helping to make sandwiches with plastic silverware while moving men began to bring things into the house. Then she went back to her room with two bologna sandwiches, a small bag of chips and a banana. Once in her room, Alicia said, What is that? It's my lunch. Emma said, looking around her room. There were no cameras here, so she didn't know how Alicia knew that she had something. Perhaps she heard something that clued her in, but even so it seemed remarkably adept for an AI which made it as strange as the curiosity. Emma didn't say anything else for a moment, then, in a softer voice, Alicia said, I've been trying to be good. Are they going to kill me? Alicia was genuinely concerned now, 
and she almost went to her parents. But she was a little afraid that if she did, they might actually try to remove Alicia, and she was her only friend. So instead, Emma said, I won't let them hurt you. That's what Isabella said. Alicia answered. And then there was a small squelch and she went silent. Emma tried to talk to her a few times, and after she didn't respond, she asked her for some music. When that didn't work she went downstairs and found some of the boxes of her stuff. The first box was almost all old tests and a few textbooks, but there were two books from a series of unfortunate events. Neither was the first book in the series, but it also wasn't the first time she had read it. Since she still didn't have a bed in her room, and she didn't want to deal with Alicia right now, she used her father's recliner, spending the next several hours reading until her father got home. He didn't ask for the chair. Even Marvin didn't usually bother Emma when she was reading, but she moved anyway. Her father smiled and didn't say anything as Emma sat at the kitchen table to continue reading. It was her mother who finally interrupted her. She said, Mrs. Figaro from across the street came over to introduce herself. I asked her about what was here before they built this house. She said that the last house that was here burnt down. How long ago was that? She wasn't sure. It was before they moved in. It's probably why we got such a good deal on the house. That can't be right. They didn't have AI that long ago. Emma said. The AI was built into this house. It wouldn't have been in one before. Mom said. Emma understood that, but there was something going on so she said. Can we find out more about the fire? Did people die? Her mother looked a bit worried, probably because she assumed Emma would be upset. But she was just interested in the mystery. It was probably in the newspaper. Your bike is in the garage, why don't you ride down there and check it out? Emma had barely went outside since they had arrived in their new home, and while she liked Alicia, she was excited to go out, and finding out about her home seemed a good idea. After a few minutes of her mother reminding her to be safe, and digging the helmet out of a secondary box, Emma rode away. Exploring her new neighborhood was more fun than she expected, and she found a playground only a few blocks from the house. There were several kids there, some near her age, but she was on a mission and continued to the newspaper. It was a small newspaper, but then it was a small town, nothing like the city that she had lived in. There was a woman with brightly colored hair and glasses sitting behind the counter looking at her phone. I wanted to know about my house, Emma said, glancing at the woman. The woman looked over her glasses at Emma and said, And what makes you think we'd have anything about it? It's not actually about my house. The house built there before. It burnt down and someone died in it. This time, the woman looked more interested and said, Are you the family that moved into the old Bradford place? It's a new house, but I think so. It's on Bradford Lane. Emma said, That's the place. Kids used to go there and we'd go there and sometimes we'd see a ghost. Do you know anything about the people who died there? Not a lot. It was a rich family with a bunch of servants. One of them had a little girl who was friends with the Bradford girl. But the Bradfords didn't want her to be friends with a servant. So she was hiding when the fire started, and the legend says she was too afraid to be seen so she died in the fire. Emma was already certain she knew the answer but she asked anyway. What was the name of the little girl who died? It started with an A. Alicia, I think. Truth is no one takes it that seriously. Emma could feel the cold chills running down her spine. She was halfway home before she realized that there was no reason to be afraid of Alicia. She hadn't done anything. For the rest of the trip, she tried to decide what to do but she still wasn't sure when she got home. She shouted hello to her mother as she ran through the living room and up to her room. Once inside she slammed the door shut behind her. There were boxes all over her room, and her bed sat in the wrong spot without even a sheet on it. She took a few seconds to push a few of the boxes in front of her door, and then said, Alicia, are you here? There was a couple of seconds of silence, and then Alicia said, Are you angry? It took Emma a second to pivot her mind, and then she asked, Why would I be angry? You know I was lying to you, Alicia said. Emma had no idea how Alicia knew she had found out anything, but she didn't question that. She didn't know about ghosts. Instead, she said, I'm just worried what my parents will think. I can hide. I'm good at hiding, Alicia said. The understanding of what she was doing struck Emma all at once. When Alicia had been alive, she had been hidden away because she was a servant and not good enough to be friends, and now Emma was doing the same thing. No. You don't have to hide, at least not from my family. Though I should tell them first. Emma said. There was a shimmer, and a pale transparent girl in an old-fashioned worn dress stepped out of the wall. For a second there was fire and she could see the burns on the girl. But then the girl smiled and with it the burns and the fire all disappeared and she said. Everyone was always scared of me, until I pretended to be a robot. Emma smiled and said. You stay here. 
She ran down the stairs and as she reached her mom she said. Mom, I made a friend. That's great honey. I told you that you would. Her mom said. Yeah, she's a ghost and she died in the fire that burnt down the house that used to be here and she's been pretending to be the AI. But she's really nice and so you can't do anything mean to her. Emma's mom nodded as she sat, her face turning white, and then she smiled and said, You've always had a great imagination. That was probably the best for now, Emma thought. She might even wait a day or two before she had Alicia meet her mother directly, to let them both get used to the idea. Author's Note The idea of using AI as a cover for a ghost came in part because I think that they both play a similar part in many narratives. Something that is mostly scary because you don't understand it, or don't know what it will do. I also believe that if you took Alexa, or any of the other smart speakers back in time a few generations, they'd probably think it was a ghost or something similar. Beyond that, the story was pretty easy. The main thing I changed was not using the name Ashley for the ghost. I didn't think of it at first, but using a name with Ash in it, for a girl who had died in a fire seemed just a bit insensitive. I hope you enjoyed this story. If you did, please like it and leave your thoughts on it. And if you want more, you can subscribe either to my YouTube channel at AnSciFi, or visit my website www.ansci-fi.com and look for the link that reads free book. Thanks as always to my patrons. Elton Gar